evening and welcome to evening prayer for Tuesday, November the 10th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun and we look to the light. We sing to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. Sing praise to your name, O Most High. To herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully, he will receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. New Testament reading tonight is from Matthew 25, beginning in verse 14. Jesus said, For it will be like a man going on a journey, who called his servants and entrusted them to his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But the one who received the one talent went and dug up the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had the ten tal two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also, who received the one talent, came forward, saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown, and gathered what I, where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has, has, more will be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Our first devotion with Martin Luther today. Happy birthday, Martin Luther, by the way. It's his birthday today. September the 10th, November the 10th, November the 10th, yes. John six twenty seven. Work for the food that lasts into eternal life. This is the food the Son of Man will give you. After all, the Father has placed his seal of approval on him. Seal of approval. The words of Jesus in this passage seem foolish, crazy, and unintelligible to those who are clever and educated. The Jewish people must have thought of Christ as senseless, crazy, and foolish. How did it look? How did it sound? This poor, simple man comes on the scene and tells intelligent people that he can give them food that will last forever. He sounds like a charlatan in the marketplace 
who tells the crowd he is selling a cure-all that will prevent illness, gunshots, wounds, and even death. Everyone would laugh at this claim. Here Christ, a beggar who doesn't own a square foot of land, is talking about giving away eternal food. If a great king had claimed this, the people might have considered it. But Christ is saying, I can do what no one in the entire world can do. I will give you a new kind of food that will last forever. Even I would have said, where did this fool come from? Have you ever heard a greater fool in your life? A beggar who doesn't have a penny will give us more than all the powerful rulers on the earth. He wants to give us eternal riches, and yet he doesn't own anything himself. These words of Christ require faith. So this message is aimed only at believers. The world doesn't understand these words, for it doesn't know anything about this type of food. Christians, those who are familiar with God's word, are convinced of its truth, know Christ through faith alone. They remain loyal to Christ. They believe he is the one on whom the Father has placed his seal of approval. We join together in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we praise your fathomless mercy with which you take pity on sinful men. All the prophets and apostles preach this to us in your holy word. Let our hope not be put to shame when we pray to you for all who suffer at this time. For behold, the evil foe has become mighty, and the great ones of this world rule often with unrighteousness. O God, who in former times caused your saints to overcome injustice, strengthen also today all who stand in need of your help. Grant that all prisoners of war held as slaves and sacrifices of earthly wrath may return to their home. Stand by all refugees and homeless people and be their justice. Be a father to the widows and orphans with your strong protection. Go through bars and fences to those who are imprisoned for the sake of your name. Strengthen them for a good witness, and let them not waver in the confession of your name. Teach us through their example and the example of so many holy martyrs to be ever watchful of the confession of your son's name. Let us not be put to shame when the evil foe lays his hand on us. But if it is your will that we be persecuted for confessing Jesus as our Lord and only Savior, then support us in your grace that we may withstand all trials and grant us peaceful rest. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, you have given exceedingly great and precious promises to those who trust in you. Dispel from us the works of darkness and grant us to live in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, that our faith may never be found wanting through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our shorter reading with for today is from 1 Corinthians 3, verses 4 to 5. For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believed. Faithful teachers. Your teachers should be content with the common honor of being a faithful teacher of God, teaching and baptizing rightly. What is the emperor or the king of France, even if he makes you a prince? He does not promise or give the remission of sins. But the office of Christ and his stewardship do these things. If one minister has a better voice than another, nevertheless, he does not have another gospel to teach or another baptism to administer. Every Christian ought to know this. For this reason, there should be no division among the ministers. Therefore, Peter does not set himself above Paul, neither does Paul do this. 
neither should you. Afterward, he says, what is Peter? What is Paul? Stewards of Christ, through whom you believed. See 1 Corinthians 3.5. Christ sent them out as ministers, and they are discharging the office through which you are saved. All things are yours. Paul says, whether Peter or Paul, through whom you believed and are saved, and you are Christ's, we are not your Lord's, and Christ is God the Father's. 1 Corinthians 3.21-23. It is a magnificent sermon against sectarianism and schism. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.